Okay, now now it works. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live, and it is Strategic Sundays with me, the Orcosaurus, uh, the Spotlight Hawk over here, and with my with my good good angel on my shoulder, Seth. I love this. Oh, you have an angel on your shoulder? Yeah, it's you. Oh wait, I am the angel. Yeah, you are the angel on my shoulder. Oh wow. Okay, so I'm like, I'm an angel or cherub. Because I guess you know, with the bald head, the cherub. You 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 are cherub because they are like more um, fat and shit and. Where? Why you got to go there? I don't know. Like. You had to go there. Yeah, I had to go there. I could also talk about their penis size, but you don't want to go in there. Oh, boy. Hey, what's up, Thousand Scars? I hope you're doing well. You're coming in right at the right time. I, I think what Seth happened? is... Yeah. Go ahead. I think Seth I is going to... Say, this is what happens when you uh, broadcast with a 12-year-old. I... I wear on my sleeve that I am a man-child. I told you 50 hundred times. You said I should be your co-host. Here I am. Oh, well. My life is full of bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scar, what's up? All right, um, Seth, Seth wanted to talk about something. I don't know. He said, "What do we want to talk about at the start?" And um, played anything interesting would be a good start. I I was like, "Yo, I I mean, I didn't play. I played something interesting, but it's not uh, strategy adjacent." Well, then it's not interesting. What is it? Nico Chigi. The heck is that? It's a visual novel where you romance like three gay cats. Okay, you had me at visual novel, you lost me at three gay cats. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's actually really well written. It's a it's a really good spin on um, the harem trope in usual visual novels, but from a more furry and LGBTQ perspective. It's really good. Um, but that's not on brand, so... Um, yeah, did I play? Yeah, exactly. So that's why we switch gears and talk something that is more on brand. And I'm I'm looking through my library to see if I played anything stra strategic related. But I've I I played Wandering Village recently. Um, Ooh. I tried the Ocean Update. That that one I tried. And it's brilliant, and if you haven't played Wandering Village, um, you absolutely should. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Stray Fawn Studios. I still need 9-bit armies. Yeah, I love 9-bit armies. It's a, it's a great game. Um, I, I played it like a few times now, and it's actually a lot of fun. Um, I mean, that I actually go back to a game three times tells a lot about it. And that Seth actually takes the time to boot one up. Amazing. Yeah. That that is not Farmers vs. Potatoes, by the way. I don't even know if that's a real game, but he plays that constantly. At least his Discord, <laughs> his Discord always says that. That's because it's an idle game, so it's running in the background, and it takes, if I'm not in another game, Discord picks it up. I, I do hate idle games so much, just so you know. I've got like 2,200 hours in it, but I played like maybe three of those. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh my god. Look, sometimes you just want to progress in something and get achievements or get you know. there, there is no there is no progression when you never do anything I spend time well I don't spend time I wait no you don't you actively do nothing in there no you set things up and then you wait for a while and numbers go burr 
Yeah, that's not that's not a game for me. That's just like I don't know. Yeah, that, that's certainly. Not... I don't know. I don't know if they classify as games per se. No, they don't. I'm I'm pretty harsh on that. Most of those don't have losing states, and I'm kind of a firm believer that a game has to have some sort of win-loss state. Okay. At least, at least you have somewhat of a of a normal mind here, Seth. I can appreciate. So I played that. a little Millennia this week, and uh, I thought it was good. Um, it still needs time in the oven, like any Paradox game that just comes out. It needs right. about a year before it'll be uh, can, a release quality game. Can we have like a game from Paradox that doesn't need time? Um, because no. they release everything unfinished. Except Lamplighters yeah. League. That was kind of finished, even if it was kind of buggy. Um, but it cost them like what? I, I mean, they, they, they wrote it off completely at the start. Um, well, where does it sit now? I think it's like a, a really underrated game. Um, it's a bit jank um, in some in some aspects and oh yeah that that game didn't sell well at all um, Mark my words L lamp it lamp two million it, 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 Yeah, but it like two millions is like nothing for paradox when you when they when they do a 28 million write-off on this game right I, I will mark mark my words. Lamplighter's League is one of those games that'll be picked up by one of those YouTube channels like um, Manda Mandalore Games or um, Seth, Seth Sintach. Um, they will make a review about it and then it'll explode because it's like it has like these cult classic vibes to me. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but yeah, I hope I'm not wrong on this one. Because I do really think that Hairbrain Schemes um, is a great death. And I'm kind of glad they are off the Paradox Farm. And I hope they um, can do something interesting. Um. I posted all the sales numbers for the, the Paradox games over the last uh, couple of years into yeah, I've uh, seen Discord it. the other day. Yeah, I've seen it. And there were some certain, there was definitely some surprises there. But one of the things about Lamplighter is here you are, you know, you're browsing through CM and you look at Lamplighter and you go, oh, look at this. This looks cool. And then you look at the reviews or you look at the message boards and you see that Paradox abandoned it. Are you going to buy it? No. So they've killed their own sales by doing that write off. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm kind of glad that they kill shit because that doesn't mean they release like five trillion DLCs for it, like they usually do. Um, I mean, just look at Europa Universalis 4. Like, there's so much DLC, you don't even know where to start. And one of the DLC, the last one they, um, they released ruins the game completely. <laughs> pa Paradox is not good sometimes let's face it so well i've been i've been waiting for victoria 3 to get into a state that's that's halfway decent and it's closed it, now it, so I've it'll, requested... it'll it'll never be halfway decent well one can only hope right yeah you can dream you're allowed to dream old man but I don't think that Victoria 3 will ever come close to the... Um, I mean, what 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 kind of makes me or what what I what I think always is um, uh, is the issue with with stuff like Victoria 3. Um, it should have been better right out of the because Victoria 3 is set in an interesting time period. It has an interesting concept. It is really fucking good. Um, but it, like, why is it always released in like this half-baked state 
and isn't even marked as early access. Like, essentially, what Paradox does is they release early access game as full price products. Well, their fan base is such a... Uh, they're so trained that they'll pay, you know, $39, $49, $59 for the release of Victoria 3, knowing damn well it won't be ready for a year, two years, three years. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Stellaris took five years to get into a state of being an okay game. Yeah, but uh, is, is that really something we should, like accept as customers even if they have a, a good fan, fan base because I don't feel like um, it's not acceptable it's the same with Melan part of the problem yeah I you are every Stellaris DLC that comes out the minute it comes out I mean I'm hoping that this game will get into a state of being good I, I, I don't get keys from start uh, from the space end of of paradox i can only do historical stuff i i i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna be honest the last game apart from lamplight is leak yeah we already had that um the last game paradox uh, paradox release that was in a somewhat acceptable state at launch was age of wonders 4. that was good that was also very well received by the community but i attribute this more to triumph studios um mm -hmm. who are very experienced devs and made a lot of games already um and uh they should actually go back and just make an overlord game oh no wait they can't they don't have the license anymore um but yeah they have i mean age of wonders planetfall was also pretty pretty good when it launched yeah, it was. Um, and like, like I said, um, but that's, that's more the studio than the publisher, I would argue, um, mm. when it comes, when it comes to that, except, um, the publisher gives, gives bad orders like they did with City Skylines 2 and damage the brand wholesale. Um, so yeah. I, I'm surprised that's not getting more attention than it is. It's how badly Paradox has screwed this up. Uh, or it's colossal order. I mean, just as a team. I think one of the thing. I think the thing that you were mentioning, though, about uh, Age of Wonders and Lamplighters League, is those were games that were developed completely outside of Paradox. Paradox uh, Development Studio had no, no really control over that, uh, except from a publisher standpoint. Whereas like EU4 or uh, um, uh, CK3, those were all done in-house. Yeah, yeah, obviously that's that's what I say, um, or that's what I wanted to insinuate. Right. These, these kind of games... Absolutely right. These kind of games that are made by, let's say, third parties, um, do, do much better except paradox interferes like they did with um skylines too because right. they they massively butchered skylines too like they they just they threw the baby out with the bathwater on that one now and yeah there's a reason that they did well there's a reason that they that they messed up and what that was was City Skylines became their number one IP. It sold better than anything Paradox has ever done. By no, long shot. no, no, that, Polaris caught up. that that's that's not the reason. The reason is they panicked. Um, just 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 look at the timeline. They released Lamplighters League, yeah, and Lamplighters League sells completely abysmal, yeah, like really really bad. And Paradox, who is already strapped for cash because we know the entire industry, when when that went down, was already struggling. They are struggling even harder now. Um, but Paradox was already strapped for cash like everyone else, right? So Paradox goes in and says, okay, we need a banger. We need money. Shove it out the door. Shove Skylines, City Skylines 2 out the door. Um, Colossal Order probably told them, it's not ready, Chief. Paradox said, I don't give a shit. Shove it out. And that's exactly what happened. 
But why it's... would they intentionally shoot themselves in the foot? Because they panicked. Okay. Humans make mistakes. I'm pretty sure this was uh, an order from some higher up. Hey, Schism Navigator, what's going on? Thank you for hey, coming Schism, in. what's up? Yeah, we, we, are, we are just uh, talking a little bit and then starting the game. Um, just so you know, humans make mistakes, said the orc. Yeah, it's true. Um, but I, I firmly believe um, when it comes to that scenario, um, Paradox panics um, with the mentality, release it now, fix it later, and shoved City Skylines 2 out the door and completely damaged the brand and everything afterwards. I would even claim that City Skylines 2 will not recover. Um, it was, it was, it, it is so bad, it is so bad that most content creators that do City Skylines content went back and now do the first game again. Um, and they released like some, uh, like a DLC now, it's called like Beachside something, and it's literally just skins for the houses. Yeah. There's not even there's not even terrain or anything there. It's a really bad DLC too. So that that game is is a long way off to make anything worthwhile. And that's that's the issue. Um Yeah. And and like like I said, I think my my, my thing is what Paradox needs, they need an internal, like, the, first of all, they need something um, to compensate, or, or they need, they, they have to be able to compensate a flop light lamp lighters leak. Um, and they should set that up. They, they need, like, a war chest or something. So they can, can stay competitive. And the, the second thing is what they need is, like, they need an internal testing ground. They need something where somebody says or blocks releases that are not done that are undercooked they need better quality assurance because that is their biggest problem so we've got a lobby set up but i don't think uh oh i guess uh if i go oh you, you you wanna you wanna switch topic okay let's go no i was just updating you where i am okay I'm I'm still switching over to the gameplay portion because um, I think we should start. Um, we can talk more paradox um, while we play the game, I guess, or even talk about this game because um, this is an early access game. So just let me let me talk a little bit about Nine Bit Armies so I can introduce it to the people who haven't seen this before. Um, on the first strategic Sunday, I played it alone because Seth left me alone. He left me out to rot like a stray dog. Um, but that's okay. I made the best out of it. Um, so what is 9-Bit Armies? 9-Bit Armies is a um, real-time strategy game by the Giga Chats of uh, Petroglyph. Who's Petroglyph? Petroglyph... Um, I usually fix it by running as admin. No game sounds. No, no, it's it, it was there. It, my my um. I I had my audio muted. My desktop audio. It's fine. Schism. Um. So Nine Bit Armies is made by the Giga Chats of Petroglyph, um, who also made Conan Unconquered. Um and Star Wars Empire at War and some other stuff. Also, the predecessor of Nine Bit Armies, Eight Bit Armies. Um, and it is very much, at least what I think uh, from 9-Bit Armies, very much in the vein of Command and Conquer. It really feels like Command and Conquer. Maybe a little bit more tongue-in-cheek, um, but it's it really feels like a good old real-time strategy game from the 90s. And I think that was the goal. So you should definitely check it out. Um, link is in the description if you want to check it out. Um, and with that being said... This is a sponsored stream, so we got the keys from Schism Navigator, who's currently in chat, and he is uh, part of Petroglyph. So that is your disclosure. 
And with that being said, I think we are going to play a little bit of co-op, you said. Are we uh, declaring uh, sponsored as being given keys? I think we can safely say that anything that we produce, you know, just assume that we've been given the key. I mean, I would just declare it as sponsored and move on. Sure. To be on the safe side. See, in my mind, sponsored means money has changed hands. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but there is like, um, like a subset of people who think that if you get a key for free for coverage, that is also a sponsorship. Just to be on the safe side, we tell people we receive the key for free. I always say it's a sponsored stream. In any case, we receive the game for free. That is the disclosure, and I think this is important. Sure. Um, I'm going over to Discord to uh, tell you what the lobby code is. Yeah. This is the first time I'm running it, and the game's absolutely gorgeous. I really love the interface. And yeah. here we are. Okay. And so you're going to go to skirmish, and then you're going to go to online game. Okay. And, oh, wait. No, uh, you're going to go join, and then I assume. I, I'm 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 already there. Keep keep it cool. Keep it cool. I'm here. I want to be are? on team one. Yeah, I want to be on team yeah. one with Seth. Okay. Want to be yeah. with Daddy Seth? Otherwise, I'd be I'd be really sad. And let me bring up YouTube in the other window. There we YouTube go. YouTube in the other window. Look look at him go. Watching his own right stream. What what a what a That's chat. Right. What 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 a right, so what a up. I've got to set to radiation ridge. Mm. I have no idea. This is the first time I'm playing the game, so this should be real interesting. Pro tip. Start building multiple buildings from the same type. Because they okay. produce faster if you have multiple ones. That is the big thing I found out. So is this StarCraft style building where uh, you have just you just set the build order and something goes and builds it? Or is yeah. it like uh total yeah, this is, where you No no this is unit. you you just click and the order you click it produces the units. But the important part is for example, if you have like a um, infantry uh plant yeah the building that produces the infantry yeah if you have multiple of them the infantry will be produced faster okay yeah that that is that is the important part okay i'm ready okay let's do this i'll have to rescue you again don't i Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We're playing okay. against Parvos and Armin. I have no clue against who we play. I just see they are on the same team. Absolutely gorgeous game. Forward HQ here. Mm -hmm. Constructing. Okay, um... I don't know what the forward HQ does. Rolling out. I'll get there. Refinery complete. Constructing. Ready to deploy. Sure thing. Okay. It's kind of... It's kind of a uh, shame that the other people can't see your screen because that would be fun. But I think we, we need to figure this out at one point, how we can do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll set that up. Basically, I'll have to, we'll have to like, give me a section in OBS. Yeah, probably somehow I need to, I need to figure out how to do that. So, um that they see your little screen in the corner or something. On the move. Yeah. Me mega complicated setups, I know. 
What do I do to expand? I guess use my forward HQ. Here. I think I'm just Allows gonna to bum rush the enemy for now. Locked and loaded. Ready to rocket. Got it. We we're just gonna bum rush real quick and see if we can Zerg rush his ass. Commander. On the way. Already gearing up for my first explore. I'm so proud of him. Constructing. Shipyard. I need to produce a shipyard. Orders. By the way, whoever made this music needs a music Oscar or something like that. Mutual. The soundtrack is absolute fire. Low power. What I need to do is expand out the area that I'm uh, able to build in. Motor pool complete. Low power. Frank Clip Clipaki. I also wrote the music for the old Command and Conquer. Oh my god. No wonder this shit rocks like hell. Reporting. I think I should have been faster. They are already sitting up pretty tightly down there. Going. Where uh, can you ping it? On the way. Low power. Yeah, that you you seen where they were. Like, um I, I don't know how to ping, but um, they are basically in the in the other corners of the map. Okay. Yeah. You, we can see each other, but the enemies are like. Oh no no no! Forward HQ here, rolling out. Ready for orders. Should be okay to ping. Alt and G. I'll get there. Power. Where to? Sure thing. You got me covered, right? Uh, no, I don't got you covered. Moving. I don't know what the forward HQ does, but we need a tech lab. I'm I'm of the firm conviction we need a tech lab right now. And left click. Okay, Alt G and left click. So that would be. Alt G left click is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Here. I see it. Yeah. So what do I do with the forward HQ? Bunker, machine gun turret. Oh shit, I can build machine gun turrets. Tech lab complete. That's actually not a bad idea. Ready to rocket. On the move. Low power. Commander. Got it. I'm probably gonna get roasted over here, but that's okay. Going. Just, just tell the enemy we are here. You know, Mission we see him. Complete. We're gonna murder him. On the way. On the move. We do some scouting. Got it. Going. Locking on. Locked on target. No power. Kill the mortar pool. Just tell the enemy we are here. Oh yeah, they already have like any. They already have like good, good, good army. They already have built, dude. See, so you're ready to attack them, right? Let's go. Yeah. Come on. What? <laughs> what? What are you saying? Constructing. Low power. Tech lag is going down. Yeah. Standing by. We'll get there first. Power plant. We'll find them. Talk to me. Machine gun turret complete. 
low power. Air control's going down. Commando. Oh shit, we have tanks now, baby. Let's go. I don't have enough power though. I need more power. Constructing. Oh, you're scouting our, our, our no power. army is bigger than Ready mine. To deploy. Yeah, because I told you, you need you need more buildings. Like you need to build the refinery and shit everything, you know? It's um Power plant complete. Yeah, of course it's complete. Okay. Construct we need more we need more power plants. Orko, Orko is the power plant god, or something like that. Constructing. Rocket turret. There we power go. plant complete. Constructing. Okay, so what you were explaining to me is it's a shared queue. Rocket amongst all complete. the buildings. No, again. Or yeah, you can see it like that. Yeah. So each one of the it's buildings on the provides. Yeah. On the move. It, it just it just produces faster overall if you have more buildings. It's just a thing. Rockets launched. Got it backing off. Reporting. Back on target. Don't we? Production halted. Insufficient funds. Waiting. Engines ready. Rockets we just need to. Slaughter. What? I didn't see the uh, the assault, but I got slaughtered going down. Yeah, you get slaughtered pretty easily in this game. If you don't pay attention, my my goal is just to keep the enemy like. Um, Production halted. Insufficient funds. To to keep the enemy basically just at bay, so they don't get feisty. Ready to go. Yeah, load him up. Heavy load. I need an additional refinery. Constructing. So my harvesters. Production yeah. halted. Insufficient funds. And I need more harvesters. Let's go, baby. How's how's Seth doing over there? I'm doing good. I'm expanding outwards. Trying to figure out those cooling towers. If those, do I need we'll to travel. bring a, an army into them? The nuclear stuff? Or do I just bring my production halted? Insufficient no, funds. No, looks like I destroy them. Okay, we have an outpost. Very good. Constructing. And now we can build a. Um... Oh, we need an air control unit. That's actually a good. Good idea here. Okay. Construct. Shipyard. You go, motherfucker. Are you near the water? Production halted. Insufficient. Yeah, I'm near, near the water and I'm gonna fuck the enemy up from the side. I'm, com I'm coming from the water, Machine bitch. Complete. Shipyard complete. Production halted. Insufficient funds. I don't make enough money. That's my issue right now. Um, need more money. I need to make more money. Money, you money, put money. Bitches out on the street. Yeah, I got. I gotta get the hookers more. No, they need a good pimp slap them over here. Constructing. Okay. Oh, that's not what we need. 
I need the motor <laughs> pool. I need two of those. Production halted. Drop. Insufficient funds. <laughs> Cannon. Ready to go. So you shoot. Refinery complete. Your troops at the yeah. enemy. Load yeah. Them up. Heavy load. I'm working here. Coming through. Orders. Woo! Over oh, out of the way. Tank ready. Moving out. Okay, let's go. I think another shipyard is in order to produce faster. Constructing. Constructing. Orders, let's go. Open fire. Oh shit, they already have helicopters. They already have air support. It's not My good. Helicopters are up where do you need it? Uh. Where do you need helicopters? Rocket turret. What? Where do you need helicopters? I've got helicopters. No, 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 nowhere. I might be able to do something here. Commander. The headquarters almost down. Yes, the headquarters is dead. I kill. I geek the headquarter already. That's wow. the first one. Yeah. That's that's how you do it. That's how you do it, man. Just, just give them a run for their money. Right on. But now we need to, we need to go faster. Yeah. Because we haven't produced like troops in a while, so we have a bit of a thing here. It's called. Can I can I sell a building? Is that a thing? How did that how did that work again? And I wanna get rid of this one. Okay, whatever. They can do whatever. Okay, we need cannon boats. Torpedo boat, sea transports. We need these and we need the fuel. I need an airfield right now. I need to start uh, thinking about the airfield. Constructing. So we can attack stronger. Don't worry about your airfield. I'll bring in air support. Constructing. I'm like kind of specialized. No, I am. I'm, I'm like you. You just need it, uh, Seth. It's okay. Transport ready. Moving. Oh no! Got fucked. Doesn't matter. Rocket. Rocket turret complete. On the way. We kill them all. No mercy, motherfuckers. Tank ready. Roll out. They can rebuild the HQ though, so I, I just wanna say that. Constructing. What is this? Great. Machine guns ready. Let's roll! There's crates here. Okay. Let's check the crates. Seth says nothing anymore. Like completely enamored with the game. Sorry, I was uh, Money keying up uh, some units. Yeah. And now I've realized my economy. If you if you stream, you have to always talk, sis. Always talk. Never never stop talking. That's that's one of the key things. You can never stop talking. Talk to me. Never stop. Ready for orders. No no never stop talking. You you make fun of me, but I'll tell you, I've been at this game for a while. I know what I'm doing. Sometimes. 
Constructing. Constructing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Those are going to be famous last words now. I know what I'm doing. I, 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 I've been a little bit, I've been a little bit longer of a content creator. It's okay. I know what I'm doing sometimes. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. In this case, I'm really sure. Sus. Daddy Orko knows. Daddy Seth knows too, but Daddy Orko knows too. Air control complete. Constructing. Machine gun ready. On the move. Yes, sir. Flying out. Barracks complete. Constructing. Engines ready. We'll get there first. Constructing. Oh, they are coming over the bridge. Crush up. Commander, locked on target. Orders. Oh, it's just a harvester. You can ignore the harvester. Oh shit. Oh, 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 fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. That's something we cannot ignore. Blast up. Oh, that's an entire army. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh. Moving out. Headquarters under attack. What? How? Oh, shit. They nuked my ass. They're gonna nuke your ass too, Seth. Like nuke nuke? Yeah, yeah, nuke nuke. They nuked me. I didn't know there was like a nuke in play, but apparently they fucking nuked me to to hell and back. I'm nuke assaulting it. red. Yeah, you better do because I just got fucked. Standing by on the hunt. Go ahead. I will not let this slide. Ah. This is going to be your last nuke, my dude. Open fire. Take down. Got my ass. Oh shit. They are nuking again, by the way. They know where we are. And um they have 120 to the next nuke. What's the mission? Coordinates received. Oh yeah, I see that. Ready to yeah. Well, that's a problem. Yeah, you better be ready. Is there a counter against nukes? Uh, I think so, yeah, but um, I wouldn't know what. Radar. I don't even know how to build nukes. Me too. So that's exciting. We are finding it out together. Repairing. I don't see anything that happens differently when I start like building. Uh, multiple tech labs or anything like that. Uh, I need a radar somewhere. Okay, I got a radar. I need to build a radar. The next nuke is coming in. Yes. Move your troops. Let's roll. My troops aren't even at my base. Okay.
ready here. Radar complete. Repairing. Oh, this Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, they shot, they shot. Oh, God. It's under attack. It's all coming to you. Yeah, they, they shot me. It's okay. I survived pretty well. It's a bit like Command and Conquer. You get a little bit of a nuclear fallout. It's all good. Repairing. Just gotta repair your shit. I'm still trying to figure out the economy part of it. I've got harvesters repairing. Skism, set up. Ha help Dad over here. He's he's old. He doesn't know. <laughs> yes, command. Onward. I do have harvesters set up, and they're going places. But yeah, you have to you have to tell them a little bit where they need to go. You want two harvesters per node. Ah, Commander, roll out. There's a, the green player is ready to drop another dookie on us. Constructing. Missile silo complete. Para drop cannon. Any troops loaded into the structure will be launched at the Armory Missile silo is probably the nuke Yeah Yeah, they are coming to me They are They're taking the fight to me right now Torpedo setting course Paracannon complete Going They, they gonna they're gonna be hating on my ass. I will I will tell you that. Constructing. Because I'm constructing a missile silo now too, and they can get fucked. I'll tell you that for a fact. I have a silo, I just can't figure out how to You probably a need to pr produce a nuke or the new Oh you 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 are on three minutes. Oh. That's yeah, it just doesn't count down. down. Yeah. Machine gun turret. Right. I have a napalm bomber. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh, they are coming. Oh, bitch, be coming. They, they, they do not like me right now. They probably, yeah. They have a flotilla too. Not good. Not, not good at all, my dude. Torpedo boat, gunboat, and then we do a few of those. We need to be ready because they will nuke me again. I know they will. Oh, I see how to build a mega structure. Okay, that's kind of cool. Constructing. Oh, new coming in. Yep. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Have fun. Four nukes, five nukes. What, you getting five nukes? Five explosions. Oh God, they really nuked you, didn't they? Machine gun turret complete. No units destroyed, no buildings Luke destroyed, Hull. but a bunch of damage. What heals my units? Or what heals my building? Constructing. Power plant complete. Ready to go.
I'm gonna gearing up for the really for the really big attack now. Time to go on my way. Air support ready. Time to fly. Let's go. Want to build refineries in your notes? Yeah, so you get the money faster, of course. Set. Build an elite unit. They built an elite unit. I just need to figure out how to how to build a nuke now. How come I'm not counting down, but you are? I don't know. Maybe you don't have enough uh, power. That's I don't know. It does count down, though. It does. Yes, command. Got your back. In the air, Commander. Roger. Yes, sir. Power plant complete. Crew ready. Ahead full. Why are you not counting down? Sethi. I don't know. I can build another um, nuke, I think. Probably, it probably counts down faster if I have more. That's it now. Increases the number of missiles fired. Mm. Ready for orders. Well, here they come again. Heading to location. Under boom, 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 Slow and steady. boom, 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 boom. Oh, all my tech building's gone. Oh, shit, they fucking nuked your ass, man. They really did. Missile they really did, you complete. did a number on you there. All right, now I'm counting down. Okay. Constructing. Uh, okay, I have power still. Um, I'm gonna probably... Okay. Can, we can launch a nuke for shits and giggles. Barracks complete. Like here. Seth had no power for the nuke, that's why it was stuck. That's what I thought. Yep. When my buggy structure went up, it... Yeah, it took out their bridge. They can't get to me. Constructed. Ah, uh, they have engineers, they can rebuild it. Oh. Just, just saying. On the way. Power plant complete. Constructing. Machine gun ready. On the move. Air support ready. Time to fly. Late to the game. Air control complete. Finally. Order received. Rolling out. Go ahead, command. Moving. I'm gonna attack them huge from all sides. They will learn fear. Constructing. Something coming. under attack. Oh shit! I'll probably learn fear too. Fuck my life. They just bumped me completely. Bomber here. Location set. Like completely, completely. I don't know which structures they just Missile nuked, site but complete. That that was impressive. Harvester. Not gonna lie. Repairing. What is our mission? Every tank ready. 
You found me. Let's go. Over here. Time to move. Bitch. Bitch. Late to the game. Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh no, they do my entire air force. Something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's no. what they do. To location. Oh. Oh shit. Oh, 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 oh. They are running into. Time for the inferno. Getting that was there. horrible. And <laughs> Seth is like, no. Production halted. Insufficient funds. Moving. I want to cry. Yes, sir. Flying out. Time to cook. Time to burn. My few going in. The new. Start off with. Yeah, and I see your troops coming in. Attacking their power plant. Insufficient funds. Yeah, this is a bit of a mess. Headquarters is down, but that doesn't mean a lot actually. Engaging. Time for the information okay. set. So what kills them if taking out their headquarters doesn't? You have to you have to take out every unit, I think. I've got them. I already knew coming up where do you want it. Locked on target. I've got them. Away. Oh shit, shit, move, 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 move. They're gonna do a self nuke. Got a light. I'm gonna come in and see that mega structure, uh, uh that mega structure power power, I'm gonna launch my nuke right at it. So don't okay. move down from where you are. Okay, sir. Watch out. That's another head shoulder. Let's take that out too. Alright, you're clear. Superior firepower, bitch! You are not getting away with this, good sir. This time, you are dead. Got a light? Moving. Need to produce more stuff so I get, uh... Time to cook. How about a little fire? We need to destroy the motor pool over here. Yeah, talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking. 
I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm just super concentrated on the game right now. I know. I, I, I need to always talk. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, Seth. How's, how's your enemy doing? I'm trying My enemy is doing pretty bad. Well, I loaned a nuke to you. What? I loaned a nuke. I mean, I sent a nuke over. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to loan you my next nuke. They will not survive. I'm bringing some air force over there to help you out. Fight, fight, fight. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I'm not kissing the enemy. That's disgusting. How about a little Commander, heading to location. Gotta be there. Fireball. Watch out. What? How? Oh. This guy is actually pretty resilient at the moment. He just nuked me again, motherfucker! Headquarters under attack. Destroyed. Oh, this time! Oh, oh no! Oh, the oh, oh shit! Oh, this time he he fucked me up, dude! Like, oh shit, that that was fucked, man. What is the mission on the way? I know where his last HQ is. I'm gonna fuck him up. I don't care. I fuck him up. Hey, sis. Thanks for the for the support. We need to get this HQ out of the way. There we go. Get to the shipyard. Get to everything. Okay, I'll leave you that. I'll go north because I feel like he's still here somewhere. We got his, uh, we got his navy. Ah. Uh, I think he's still here somewhere. He's still, he's still building shit. Damn it, did he get me good, dude? Repairing. Repairing. What is our mission? Slow and steady. Red player eliminated. Yeah! Red Repairing. eliminated, I've got two nukes up. Low power. Oh yeah, I don't have power. If that's the issue. And I don't have a headquarter anymore, so I need to build a new one. Got fucked, Seth. I got fucked by them. Let me see if I can push the attack. Ready yeah. to I can give you pretty pretty good air support, at the moment. Location. I see that. Moving to location. Low power. Chain tank ready. Rolling. Heavy tank ready. Order received. Headquarters complete. Time for the inferno. Getting there. Moving. Watch out for the splash. Support. Time to fly. I bring every every like thing I have back there so we can get green. Did you nuke him? Yeah, you probably yep. did, right? I need to I need to build power because I don't have power anymore. That's my issue. Constructing. Um, my nukes aren't loading at the moment. Fire, fire. You need to take away their power plants, otherwise they will nuke again. I'm working. Yeah, they just did. They just did. Oh fuck! Get, get your get your troops out of the. There. I saved some. I saved some. I knew he would self nuke. Somehow I had the I had the. Impression that would be would be a thing he Game is stressful. Very stressful. How about a little fire? 
And the end co-op, this is a lot lot of fun in co-op. It is! Nukes are starting to load again, maybe? Constructing. I don't think it's gonna matter much. Oh, I'll nuke his ass, all right. It depends, he probably has a second HQ somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he, he has a second HQ somewhere. Take your troops and look around before he builds another one. I'm taking out his power. Yeah. So he can't nuke us. It's probably a good idea. Fire. I'll try to. Oh, oh, no, 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 my friend. No, 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 my friend. Watch out. You can scout by new gang. Go ahead, command. <laughs> Going now. Got a fire. Fire. Yes. Got shell on it. Just the target. Time to cook. On my way. Time to burn. You're never gonna nuke again, you bitch. Right. They've got no power and no silos. Something's coming in. That's me. I nuked the bridge where he had some ships. But he, he still is he still has a HQ somewhere. Otherwise he'd be he'd be done for. No, he's done. Yep, we, that's go. It. we did we did get every Mission single complete. building. Alright. Let's see. Woo! Units created 409 for you. 316 killed. Structures built 41. And you killed 81. I uh, only built 180 units. I only killed 143. I built 31 and I dropped 26. The AI did uh, 201 and 271 units. Uh, Red AI killed a lot of people, and that was probably me, him killing me. <laughs> no, that was him killing you, actually. Yeah, it was me, mm -hmm. but that's okay. You got to I always meat grinder. Yeah, I, I, I always play meat grinder in these kind of games. Yeah. Just throwing shit at the enemy, so I keep them on, uh, so I keep them on their toes. Exactly. You got to keep them busy. That was mm -hmm. a good game. I enjoyed it. Uh, I really liked the game. Uh, it's one of the first RTSs I've played in a while, uh, especially co-op. I don't usually play co-op, but this is cool. I don't usually play co-op, he says. No, I usually I usually play single-player campaign type stuff. I don't usually do, like, skirmishes or mech wrecks or anything mm -hmm. like that. Thumps, thumps. Mm -hmm. You know, back in, I guess, what was it, the uh, late 90s, we would uh we would all go to this internet cafe uh coffee house and we had eight computers lined up on the wall we would all sit down and, and play some starcraft every friday night mm -hmm. actually brood wars to be technical so yeah this is a game i want to come back to i certainly want to uh go and play the campaign I think there are some interesting things about it. There's some really interesting features. Yeah. Uh, there's some quality of life stuff that I'd like to see. But overall, I think this is definitely a really solid uh, RTS, which I expect from Petroglyph. You know, if they if they produced a subpar RTS, I would be amazed. I mean, Petroglyph is uh, a really good RTS. Uh, developer, so yeah, I agree. Um, let me let me Empire go back to my.
Let, let me go back to my bedroom real quick so we, we have a we have a bit of a nicer view here um it is i mean i i already played it a few times so um i do think it's a really good game um it does have of course it's early access it does have some quirks here and there but i i think they are working on it and <laughs> as far as early access launches go I would say you could pick a lot worse at the moment. Oh, certainly. You know, knowing so. it's an early access and knowing they're going to improve on probably everything that I thought of, mm. and then uh, times two. Uh, you know, we've got some big players about to hit the uh, hit the RTS scene. You know, you've got Tempest Rising coming out, and I expect that to be a juggernaut of a game. Hmm. Yeah. We we should actually, you know what we should do? Co-op? I don't know, do you do you have Conan on Concord? Do I have Conan on Concord? Yeah. I know do I have, have one of the Conans. What, one of I the know Conans. Some guys at, there, I know there some is... guys at Petroglyphs, but I'm sure they can make it happen. Yeah, exactly. Because um I mean we just have to ask Skism, I guess. If he if he's gonna gonna give you a key, I have mine. So um, because Conan Unconquered is a lot of fun. Um, imagine you are playing They Are Billions but co-op. I got it. Yeah, that's that's all you had to tell me was that it was They Are Billions but co-op, uh, yeah. or They Are Billions but Conan, because there is yeah. another Conan game that I didn't get, but I got this one. So I really like the the concept of there's there's only three, three Conan games I think I'm not sure. Well, there was the uh, survival one. It's the other yeah Conan Conan something. But I'm, oh wait, what's the name? Uh, Conan Exiles Exiles. That's the base building one. And then there was yeah. Conan Unchained. I think there was like an MMO. I think that is still going. Yeah, it's free. It's still going. Yeah, Unchained sounds familiar. You know, that's funny because I guess Funcom has a license. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I like Funcom having the license because they usually do not do anything with licenses. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we'll see. I'm, I used I'm, to be a big. What was it? Anarchy on uh, Anarchy Online was their first. Uh, MMO yeah, yeah, that was the was Secret was, World. Yeah. I mean, their, their stuff is still kind of up, but, um, yeah, I think Conan, um, Conan Unchained, then, uh, Anarchy Online and The Secret World are all in maintenance mode, so they are basically just there, so you can play them, but there's, yeah. like, no updates or anything going on. What, what I want from them, um, is the, is the Dune Awakening one. That that's well, gonna. Here. I don't know. It says to be announced. Um, I. It, it's basically Code and Exiles with a Dune license, so that's kind of cool. Um, my uh, the lead designer and I guess the guy who run Strategy Mill back when I was working with Terminal Conflict, he was uh, uh, putting his hat in the ring for the producer role on that title. Um, and I had given him a glowing recommendation for phone call, but he didn't get it, unfortunately. As it always is. Sometimes you just are not lucky and don't get your role. Yeah. I mean, I, it makes sense. He, he didn't have any MMO experience. So, I mean, he's a great designer. He's a great producer. Um, and he was going up for the lead uh, producer role, so... I mean, I guess, you know, you don't necessarily need MMO experience if you're in a producer. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a game I would like to see. So, to, to, like, wrap it up a little bit, we started out with a little bit of what did we play? Um, why not, why not talk a bit about a few, um strategy video games that are coming out we are looking forward to sure let me uh actually pull up what's coming out this this week or the next couple of weeks you, you're like I, 
I am prepared, Arco. <laughs> I am ready to go. So let's see. Puggle. Mm -hmm. I have a thing about Peggle. I it's a guilty pleasure for me. So Poggle is like the newest version of the Peggle light game. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Colony Defense, which looks uh, a little bit uh, really interesting, like a uh, tower defense, but RTS action style game. Colony Defense, you say? Yep. Of Life and Land is a life simulator city builder. I I know I know the death of that one. He was in my stream yesterday evening. Um, I'll get a key for that. Oh, cool! Ask yeah. ask him for one for me, please. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, RTSs, we've got From Glory to Goo, mm -hmm. which looks like a retro styled RTS. Colony Sim Tower Defense Space Game. Twilight Survivors, which is a really hyper stylized graphic vampire survivors clone. It looks really good animation wise. God only knows that the gameplay will be there because all these vampire survivor clones, most of them don't do anything better than vampire survivors. Planet Tiles, which uh, <clears throat> both me and uh, uh, Scar were given keys for. We're going to be doing some contact around that. It's kind of like a uh, tile laying game, but on a planet. Similar to, to say, Dwarf Romantic or uh, the board game Carcassonne. Anonymous Hacking Simulator. I love hacking games. Let's see what this one is. Most of them are all crap. Azuv, which is a co-op uh, deck builder. A-Z-O-O-V-E. What a weird name, right? Yeah. I don't understand why you would want co-op in a deck builder. It seems like the person, the people that are running part of the deck would be bored half the time. But maybe like if you're on stream or something and you got your buddies and you're all having a beer and chatting and stuff. Maybe the next one. I don't know. We'll see how it is. Um, auto Risk Risk, which is an auto battler. Looks like an inventory management style auto battler, which, by the way, I am in love with backpack battles. I think it's fantastic. And if they add a constantly changing meta, or at least a, a better meta than it is now, then that game is going to be fantastic. It's already fantastic. Got some Buckshot Roulette coming out on the 4th of April. Okay. Why don't you tell us what Buckshot Roulette is? It's Buckshot Roulette a strategy, I guess. It's a game of chance. Yeah. You don't know what Buckshot Roulette is? No, I'm telling you, you tell everybody. It's the most followed game on that day. Yeah, it's um it, it's it's a sorta kinda poker game where you and the handler take um turns in shooting yourself in the face with a shotgun. Um very YouTube safe, very, very YouTube friendly. But good stuff. Um it's it's just not for me because I bad at like math. It's only prob it's really probabilities. Okay, he's got two shots. Uh he's already fired three blanks. What are the odds of the next shot being a yeah, blank that type of shot? It's it's not my kind of game. And then you've got add ons that you can put in, like you can change the probabilities I, I, of something by yeah, yeah, I know, sawing I know, off I know, the shotgun or something. I, I know, I know, I know, but it's so not for me. I'm not t I'm not saying these things for you. I'm saying it for the people that are hopefully listening and on the 5th of april that's a big day 
That's a big day. Sons of Valhalla comes out, which is a side-scrolling base builder. Uh, very eagerly awaited, being published by Hooded Horse, which uh, the Wait, domination so in the strategy scene yeah. by Hooded Horse is massive. When I pulled those numbers, I believe I posted them into chat uh, over our Discord. And by the way, if you're not in our Discord, you should be. We post a lot of industry stuff in there. Uh, their domination is just dramatic. You know, we're talking, you know, tens of millions of dollars on each release. You've got, um, you've got, uh, uh, what is it, against the story, I think a million units sold. It's just dramatic what they're pulling off. And then we've got Victory at Sea Atlantic, World War II Naval Warfare, which has the tags of Strategy, Simulation, RTS, and Grand Strategy. Interested to see why it's called a Grand Strategy game? It looks amazing. The it water does. effects are beautiful. We'll see how it is. The Atlantic is not usually portrayed uh, in video games very much when it comes to World War II games because everybody's concerned about the Pacific um, and, you know, the carrier wars that went on there. But I think the Atlantic has some exciting things that were going on, the hunt for Bismarck, uh, the Graf Spray, and uh, them forcing the Graf Spray into Africa uh, to uh, eventually get scuttled. I believe in South Africa. Uh, the U-boat breakout. I mean, I guess U-boat games are do focus on the Atlantic uh, more so than the Pacific, maybe. I mean, there, but, there you know, barely they, was. I mean, of course there was in the Pacific, but like the U-boat war in the Atlantic was so much bigger. Well, if you were playing a Yubo game, would you prefer to play as Japanese, American, or um, German Yubo? I don't really know. Why not just make a make-believe scenario up? Why not do something new? Red, blue, and yellow? Yeah. Why not, I... why not just play uh, this one board game where you guess where the enemy ships are what what what's it called in in english battleship yeah exactly battleship why not why not make make something like that with red blue you sunk my battleship yeah do, do you know how it's called in english in in german no schiffe versenken <laughs> which is literally translated sinking ships <laughs> Or to sink ships, more or less. You know they made a movie based on the board uh, on the game. Yeah, the I know. Game. It had it had Rihanna in it, and it was fucking awful. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine that being being any good. It, it was wait wait wasn't wasn't Peter Burke the director? Peter Burke is always like know. such a su such a good fuckboy when it comes to uh, yeah, it was Peter Burke. Um, he, he's like, he's like a director you call when you want to make like a shitty blockbuster movie. Um, and yeah. It just sounds like a horrible concept. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna make this about this horrible board game that's, that has absolutely, you know, no gameplay whatsoever. You just call out a number. <laughs> I mean... I, I don't think it's entirely a bad concept in and of itself because it... I mean, in the end, what what you need to do if you make a movie like this based on a board game like the, this um, is just showing cool ship battles, right? But what they had to do is they had to go with, like, aliens and shit. Like, nothing that had anything to do with naval battles. Why? Just show cool naval battles. Like this is one uh, I I I don't know the English title. That's why I don't say it. I watched it as a kid, and I just know the German titles for <laughs> for some stuff. But there's like this cool ass movie where like a modern um 
battleship goes back in time and then like is in the battle of midway i think or or something yeah. and and the, i, I the, Phil, uh, the philadelphia project is one of them but that one is a different movie uh where you know you've got the fighter jets taking out the zeros at yeah and that's at the, midway. The, yeah that's such a cool movie um final countdown. final countdown is it called final countdown let me check uh, okay. so, yeah, it's I think it's final countdown. I think it was Final Countdown with Kirk Douglas. It's such a cool concept of a movie. Why not do something like that? You know, something more stupid and out there. But like, it's 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 whatever. I yeah. I I, I do. Final Countdown was a great movie. I, I do think so too. I, I remember liking it, but I, I've seen it when I was like eight or something. So I might be wrong. But yeah, um it's it's like I guess I started getting into like when I when I started moving into like professional war gaming and, and you know, working working with various war games as a profession, getting paid mm. for it. I kinda entered in by doing scenario design. And so one of the things I did for a game called Carriers at War was I created a, a you know a series of scenarios where it was you know the the modern aircraft carrier going back in time into various things. So I really like the movie. It's got Kirk, it's got Peter, it's got Martin Sheen. I mean, what else do you who who else do you want in a movie? I don't know. Never heard of the director. Hmm. So sometimes, sometimes you just don't need people to know them. Um, yeah, he made movies awesome. So the Apparently next big release after the, the Valhalla one, which is kind of like if you remember the game Kingdoms, it's basically Kingdoms, but instead you're. Isn't Mana Lord coming out in like at the end of April? Mana Lords. I think uh, it comes out in early access fairly soon in the next one to two months. Final Factory comes out on the 9th, and this I'm excited about. Yeah. You take Factorio and put it in space, and you're building this space factory that is going to defend against various alien invaders or things that are going to be attacking your base. That sounds like a lot of fun. I like the concept of that. Yeah, it's it's Mana Lords is uh, 26th of April. And the 10th of April, we've got Broken Roads, which I'm amazed to see this product ship. It's been delayed so many times. Um, I have really high hopes for it. I can't I talk about it. I, I have played it. Um, I can't talk about it. TSI has a, a big thing going on with it. Scar, me, and Jade are going to be producing uh, day one content for it. So... Uncle Orko sits this one out. Take what we say or I say with a grain of salt because we have worked fairly close with Broken Roads. This is, you know, the disclaimer saying that there's not really a conflict of interest, but maybe, you know, it's we're friends. So they never paid any of us, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um I'm very critical of broken roads. So um it's not all uh the entire team is not in on it. Um Seth knows I'm very critical of the product for various reasons. And um yeah, but I I just wanna wanted to tell you that. Well, I, Eric was saying that uh, it was never going to come out like two years ago. He said that. Um, so, I mean, this project's been plagued with delays since its inception. Mm. I, I mean, I Very played ambitious. it. I played it during Gamescom 2022. Um, I was generally very unimpressed by it. And I also did, um, 
uh, not see my uh, issues that I have with the game being rectified over the time, but like it, the, the problem lies with the overall or complete initial design, I would say, because it's just not made for me. Well, things like the moral compass have really taken a, and that's part of the design. I'm, I think that maybe where you're going with that. Um, that system has taken some really big overhauls in the last six or seven months. I, There's I a big do, patch that hit. I do in generally dislike if you put decisions that somebody would make into a moral compass. Um. Just let me make the decision. Don't, like, moralize about it. I do not like that. And um, don't... And it feels like... You're getting judged. When you make a decision. Well, and that's what I don't like. That That's a fundamental problem the game has. At least for me. And that's why I will not really play it. And... The other issue that I already stated that I have with it is basically that it's just like looking like Disco Elysium and I wasn't already the biggest fan of Disco Elysium. Yeah, I love Disco Elysium. I think it's one of the best games that come out in the RPG narrative genre in a long time. So I think that's why I'm so keen with Broken Roads is because it's got a lot of those similar systems, a lot of the similar feel. Yeah, if Disco Elysium was, was a Fallout game, like the original Fallout, Fallout 1 and 2, I feel that broke, this that would be Broken Roads. I, I like my, my problem is that Disco Elysium um, is basically a visual novel that uh, guises it, it guises itself under the mantle of RPG, which it isn't. It's more of a choose your own adventure book that's my first issue and if broken road is doing the same thing i'm out if there is like there, no. there is no there's no gameplay in this coalition like hard systems do not exist you just basically choose your own narrative which is fine don't get me wrong i play visual novels all the time but if if somebody tells me this is an rpg then i expect an rpg and not a visual novel Well, I think I, um, or I choose I your own adventure like, book. Disco Elysium runs uh, a nice little line, and it kind of it's kind of teetering on the tightrope between RPG and visual. There is no tightrope, Seth. There is no gameplay. Your stats determine whether you're going to succeed in something or not. Um, so the gameplay is kind of like... There is no gameplay. Uh, uh, I don't know. We can agree to disagree. We can, but like I said, there is no gameplay. It, it's like, it's like the, ba the barest minimum. Like the barest absolute minimum. And I expect more. Especially from... A title that's been like heralded like the second coming of Christ. Sorry. Well, it's no. been heralded like that because of the story, not necessarily because of the game. The story, the story is good, but it's like it's the same with Last of Us. They overblow the shit out of proportion and tell you it's like the best thing since the invention of sliced bread, and then you play it and you find like something that is <clears throat> mostly off average writing in a video game and that's it i never played um the last of us one or two but you know i would see stories about people crying over the story and getting really super attached to various characters when the big plot thing happens people you know losing their minds over it it's um if you refer to the death of joel um, that's not a spoiler, by the way. Everyone knows that at this point. Um, most people do mm, do have issues with how it happened and why. Not that it happened, 
but with the why and how. Because it's really, it's really terribly executed from a narrative yeah. perspective. And that, that is the big issue with that one. Um, I do think that... Um, Disco Elysium, if we, if we compare like Last of Us 2 and Disco Elysium, does not have like these kind of really terrible story beats that Last of Us 2 has. Because Last of Us 2 is a terribly written game. I will just say that. And if you come at me for it, come at me. I'm ready to defend my position. Um, but it still is, from my point of view, like a better told narrative at best. And I do, like, I, I generally, if... if but that's that's generally an issue you have in the um, in the video game space. Um, if a game comes along, then it's like above average writing, then it gets like heralded like the second coming of Christ. Yeah. And um, I think we should, like in general, we should scrutinize writing in video games more. Um, especially games that are more narrative driven like RPGs for, for example um, there was like this game released uh, what what was it called um, that I backed on Kickstarter let me, let me look it up it's H something um, H something give me a second I'll have it I'll have it in a moment H R. Sorry, Age of Shattering, right? Um, yeah. That was just recently out, and the gameplay is really solid. Um, it's a bit like the um, old Baldur's Gate games. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a squad-based tactical RPG, so actually something we could look into. But like the narrative is like so shit. Like I had to stop playing because it was absolutely awful. And, and that's like something that that grinds my gears because writing in games still plays a second fiddle yes absolutely and Zoria pretty much everybody that's, that's reviewed the game or talked about the game and said the same thing the gameplay is great the story is ridiculously bad uh Schism, it, uh, again, um, you, you are, you're kind of right when you say debating if games are games. Um, uh, it's as useful what is art. Uh, I agree to an extent, but like it's, it's more an exchange of opinions. Uh, I see it at least that way. Um, yes, I don't have, argue I don't, what a I don't, is. I don't, I don't have, um, I don't have necessarily an issue with a uh, low gameplay, as I said. My issue lies more with the fact how some games are received and how I do think some things are just overblown. Um, I mean, Disco Illusion is still a game. I just wouldn't classify it as an RPG. Of course. You know, my buddy Tomo, who is the creative director over with the uh, game Epic Tavern, which we've covered pretty extensively on our various platforms. You know, that's a narrative game, but one of the things that it's doing is it's got a narrative engine behind it, and it's pulling, it has stories and story beats and various plot lines that are, that are set into the game, but it's also procedurally generating stories as it goes. I think that's really an exciting, um, an exciting path to see narrative more narrative games uh you know using procedural generation to kind of be able to tell a story it's not gonna you're never gonna get you know hp lovecraft out of a a, a procedural generation engine but Hades did this pretty well but they had they they took the story out of the procedural generation for the most part so 
Um, yeah. Which one was that? Hades. Hades, okay. Yeah. What should I publish as uh, great adventure games these days? I'll take a look at those. Give some... Um, yeah, and I agree with the adventure games. They, they've been consistently well written. Um, even the old adventure games, like the ones from LucasArts and stuff like that, they've been really funny and have been well written. I have a pet peeve with how people say that Dark Souls games are hard. This is from Schism. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about Dark Souls. <laughs> I'm a strategy guy. I think Dark Souls is a horrible game. I don't see the appeal. Ooh, ooh, that's a hot take if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. It's a, no, I it's, like, it's like it's not hard. You know, learn the attack patterns. You die, and you what, what, finally what, get a new weapon. What what Dark Souls basically is is a 2D Mega Man platformer, but in 3D. Just learn the pattern and emerge victorious. I mean, Schism is right when he says that. Um, but that was just... I, I think they utilized the old school design of earlier games a little bit. So, sure. yeah. For, for, me, for me personally, I like them, but I can see why people don't like them. So that's fine. Um, but I, I feel like um, what, what grinds me more is like um, that... A lot of people just want to make Souls games without properly understanding them. That's more something that I have a pet peeve with. Leave the Souls games to FromSoft. And no, that's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying you have to look at um, either what FromSoft does and put your own spin on it like Neo did. Neo 1 and 2 are great examples for that. Um, or you just don't do it. I like guess there's. Bloodborne was the other one? Yeah, but that's also from Soft. Oh, was it? Because yeah. I like Bloodborne a lot better than Dark Souls. Blo Bloodborne is uh, from Soft 2. Like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, um, Bloodborne, and now Elden Ring are essentially the um, core Souls titles, if you will, by FromSoft. And um, other good games that I would recommend for someone who says, hey, I like Souls game, um, what can you recommend me? Um, I would say, for example, Neo 1 and 2, they are pretty good. Um, I would say Lies of P, which is more in the vein of Bloodborne, uh, was pretty great. So, yeah. yeah there are some good clones out there um, that understand what they are doing. But most don't. It's just there have been some really interesting, you know, things in like the streamer world and stuff like that with people playing souls likes or using uh, uh, accessibility controllers or just weird controllers because they want to, you know, paraplegics playing Dark Souls with their nose, um, stuff like that. You know, I, I think there's this one girl who's got one leg and she plays on a uh, uh, dance pad. Yeah. Um, interesting stuff like that but i don't know i can't see myself sitting down at 11 o'clock at night and uh unwinding with a good soul flight i i can but like i said we're all different and that's the beauty of it mm. and i think the cool part about games is like there's something for everyone that is what we can Aww. all agree and that's the Easter message from TSI. Yeah. Is there something, yeah, for, something for for everyone? There's something games. for everyone in games, and that's the cool <laughs> part about it. Whether it be Dark Souls, a real-time strategy game, a tactical RPG, a visual novel, um, or whatever you fancy, you know, um, you'll find something. That is just a fact yeah. of life. 
Or you'll get a 4,000 unit Steam library and never be able to play anything because you'll just be staring at it going, what do I want to play today? That That's actually a funny thing that you mentioned that I started deleting, removing games permanently from my library. I've got a, a folder for, uh, you know, like in Steam, it lets you do those collections. I operate yeah. completely in collections. So I've got like a, a burial pile and a back catalog and a stuff I'll never play and just stuff that sucked. Try to yeah. take it out of, you know, the uh, the more important categories. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just uh, waiting for everything. Um, for, I'm just going through my library bit by bit and remove the stuff I will never touch. Like where I know this been sitting in my library since I don't know, 2015, I've never booted it up. <laughs> I'll just make sure. Know. I'll just make sure it's still listed. Um, if it's still listed, I keep it. I've been really enjoying this new program uh, that I've been playing with called Launchbox, which brings in my libraries from all the different storefronts it brings it in from GOG, it brings it in from Ubisoft, it brings it in from Xbox, brings it in from Epic, brings it in from Steam, of course. And uh, you can sort it in 90,000 different ways and it looks good. And you can create your own dynamic list. Um, and it uh, brings in all the media, like if there's uh, screenshots associated with it, uh, it'll bring that in. And it also does MAME and other emulators. And I think that's the main purpose for it, is for doing emulator stuff. But it's really solid as a... I, I use it much more than just launching and looking through Steam. Um, I've got all these folders set up for like January 2024 release. And uh, the demos that came out in January that I picked up. And uh, games that were added, which means that they're they're potentially not released on that month or mm. they were older games or whatever that I grabbed. So that's a really nice way of slicing and dicing my library. Check it out. Launchbox. Launchbox. Okay. Okay. And with that being said, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah. Happy Easter, everyone, from the TSI. And remember, gaming has something for everyone. And we'll be back next Sunday with a new stream. And Seth still owes me the second mission of Terminator. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to do that technically. And uh, we'll get that, that done this week. We'll figure it out. I mean, you can just stream from your computer and I sit there and being smarmy and shit. That's true, I can. I need to learn how to do that anyway. And, I mean, I know how to do it, but just to make sure that... Yeah, exactly, because you need to... I need to. Exactly, because you need to stream without me too, you know? You need to you need to get this channel up to speed, you know? It's your channel. I'm just a helping hand. I'm just a puppeteer with the hand up your ass. Wait, what? And we appreciate all the help. Yeah, I know. Look, look. Who is FBI agent Meat Man? I have no clue. He was in the chat said, saying hi. But they said uh, they said we we should like make out or something. Oh look. yeah. Look, look, look. Wait, there it is. Hot okay. orc on bald guy okay. action. I have I have you I have you now. I have you know oh, you're now boy. my puppet. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I thought you were gonna make me small and put me under the desk or something. No, no, no. Uh, I, I just uh, have my arm up your ass now. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, Seth. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you here again, so you don't don't cry. All right, All right so this everyone. has been uh, this has been us. You have yeah. been you. Yeah. 
Take care, everyone, and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.